There are 25 epic brawlers, including the newest one. Since it's the largest rarity, I'm going to be ranking every single epic brawler so you guys know exactly where to spend your hard-earned credits and who to redeem at tier 25 on the Brawl Pass. Starting out, I'm going to run through a few that I'm kind of grouping together here because the point kind of remains for all of them. There are better substitutes for each of these brawlers in 25 through 22. There are just better brawlers out there than these guys, and if they're fun for you, go crazy, but if winning is your objective, these are going to be on the bottom of my list. Number 25 is going to be Hank. 24, Sam. 23, Ash. Even though he did get a small buff, I didn't really feel like it made too much of a difference, and there are just a lot of tanks that I think are better than him, and 22 is going to be Bonnie. Next up, I'm going to talk about a couple tanks that are on the rise for me due to either buffs, hypercharges, whatever it may be, or more importantly, the modes that have come out. So coming out with 21, I'm going with Frank. I'm not making an argument that he is a great brawler. I don't think he's special. However, he does have a high amount of health points, and so because of the newest ranked mode that just came out, we have Big Friend. Big Friend allows for the highest HP brawler on your team to disperse that same amount of HP to the rest of your teammates. So Frank, being the highest, now becomes very relevant. Additionally, in basketball, he's actually pretty good at it. He can walk down the map, and unless you can get the ball out of his hands, you can pop from the three, you can pop an easy layup in there, unless they can get that ball with like a gale push or a tarp pull or something. If they don't have that, you kind of just get free buckets because of the amount of HP he has. So I actually think Frank has some use now. BB is going to come in at number 20, and I really wanted to put BB higher, but she didn't get a base stat boost or anything like that. And last time around, even a couple months ago, wasn't very high on BB. I still don't think she's a great brawler. I love BB. I think she is very fun. The hypercharge is actually pretty good. It's added some relevancy. Getting that hypercharge isn't too bad, but I just feel like there's more tanks that are better than her still, even with that hypercharge. So it was hard to put her much higher than this. Now that we've broken through number 20, we are going to be talking about some brawlers that I think are still good. They are certainly winning brawlers. They're not the easiest to win with necessarily as you get more competitive, but they do their job. They're solid. So starting out number 19 is M's. This may feel low to some of you all, but the truth of the matter is M's as you grow in competition, as people get better, they get way better at dealing with her. M's inherently isn't a crazy brawler, but at lower ladder, if you're a little newer to the game, if you're learning the mechanics, if you're not exposed to the huge brawler pool that there is, M's can certainly pop off. It can definitely gain you some trophies early on, but once you start getting up there, it's not necessarily as easy to work with. Lola at number 18, I kind of feel similar with. I feel like Lola is in a spot right now where we are in such an open meta where in ranked, we have so many more open maps. We have a modifier that literally opens up the map really early on, and Lola has some good distance, some great DPS, but gets outranged by people like Piper and Nani, so I'm not sure that I'm convinced that Lola necessarily fits with the time, but she's definitely not a bad brawler. I just don't think this is the meta for her right now. Along with a meta filled with sharpshooters, I'm going to put Mandy at 17, which may seem a little low. I definitely think there are a lot of maps that she can work at, but for me, I just prefer to have other sharpshooters out there on this list. Hopping into number 16 here, I'm going to go with Grom. I don't think he's the best of the throwers. I don't think he's consistently as picks. He's not somebody that necessarily got a huge buff or anything. Newer players really struggle into this shot, so kind of a similar argument to what I brought up with M's, but as you go along, it gets a little bit harder to use. And additionally, now that these maps are opening up more and more, Grom's just in a spot where it's even easier to dodge his shots, so easy early on. But as you progress, as you get better and better, Grom's not necessarily as valuable. Coming in at number 15, I'm going to throw my favorite brawler in the game here. It is going to be Gale. I feel like Gale is in a pretty good spot of being balanced. He's not a bad brawler. I would say he's above average. I think he can be a nuisance. He's going to have his uses, but it's not enough to where I'm drafting him or picking him on ladder for every single map and mode. Coming in at number 14, it is going to be the newest brawler of the game. It is going to be Angelo. And now that he's out to the public, I think he's really good, but it's hard to say that he's necessarily going to be a brawler that everyone can pick up and thrive with. He's a little more challenging and obviously being a sharpshooter, he's not as easy to hit. This is a longer range meta, at least for the ranked game mode with some of the new modifiers that came out. And even in classic, I could kind of see some maps and modes where I could see this guy working out really well. If you're an average to newer player though, be careful about Angelo. There are other brawlers ahead on this list that I think are easier to play as, easier to push in general ladder. So cautionary tale, at least in that sense, but the newest brawler is definitely solid. At number 13, I'm going to be throwing in a brawler who benefited greatly from one of those 84 balance changes that came out a week or so ago. It is going to be Griff, who somebody I could immediately tell was a difference maker. That balance change definitely elevated him. He was somebody way lower on the list last time we did this. So Griff is definitely on the rise for me. I don't think I can put him much higher than this just because I think he's not going to be used as much as some of these other brawlers and more competitive ranked mode scenarios. But on the general ladder, this isn't the hardest brawler to play. He's got a super that can make some huge pop off potential. I think Griff is just a very versatile brawler. Again, not the hardest to play. So I think this is kind of a good spot where he can rest at number 13. At number 12, I'm going to be talking about B and another sharpshooter at number 11 is going to be Bell. I feel like both of these brawlers are about the same in my mind in terms of ranking and where they fit in. They definitely have their uses with ranked mode coming out. I feel like they have some extra ones with some of the modifiers 
requires such time detonation where the map blows up you got some extra range but i do think there are other sharpshooters that i would prefer to have over them but they definitely have their uses big game for example is one that he is going to greatly benefit from high hp brawlers is what she does best into she's always been good into tanks she can slow down enemies with her super and a heavy hitting regular shot especially with that insta b load so i think b is in a pretty good spot the squishiness was an issue and now a big friend having high hp is the name of the game so not only does she get high hp but the other brawlers do too and that's where she's going to thrive bell's always been a swiss army knife for brawl stars i was hoping that hypercharge would elevate her as a brawler overall i don't feel like it has much i feel like it's kept her about the same threshold it's nice that she has a hypercharge don't get me wrong it's still helpful but it's not to a point where it's going to be boosting her to some other level of brawler so i think this is a pretty solid spot for both of them cracking the top 10 is going to be a brawler that i'm sure a lot of the comment section is going to want to talk about it is one of the most popular brawlers in the game and it's going to be edgar i'm not trying to take away from edgar edgar actually i think has one of the best hypercharges in the game but that hypercharge has been nerfed a ton i think his ladder ceiling is pretty high which is why he gets this top 10 to me but if you're looking for competitive brawlers brawlers that are hard hard carries in the ranked mode specifically i think there are better places to look once you get to a draft situation edgar is very counterable there are very tough situations to squeeze edgar in there as you move up the ranked ladder so i think there is a ceiling for edgar which is why i'm putting him at number 10 rather than some of these other brawlers i think you can draft more frequently will get more use out of and are still really really good so edgar is coming in at number 10 for me coming in at number nine is going to be Stu, and i think he's in a great spot right now i think he deserves to be top 10 because of how good he can be he's not the easiest to use so if you're looking for free trophies maybe look elsewhere but if you're looking for a challenge if you're looking to be rewarded for good gameplay Stu fits that really well i think being able to be a good Stu elevates you as a player makes you more valuable is going to help you out in the ranked grind if you're going for really high stuff like the mythics the legendaries the masters out there i think Stu's not the easiest but it's hard to claim that he's not good so i feel like this is kind of a good happy medium of all kinds of players putting him in here at number nine coming in at number eight i'm gonna throw bow in here and this is gonna be an argument that's kind of the opposite of Stu, right bow is much easier to play and i think he's a very solid brawler as well i feel like he's kind of in that top 15 to top 20 overall brawler state right now when you're including ranked ladder all that jazz but there's no doubt that bow is very good he's way better than he used to be after all the up and downs of his balance changes he's kind of settled in a place where he's not going to necessarily be a super hard counter into a lot of things but he's going to be pretty solid on a lot of maps and modes so i think bow fits in at a good spot here at number eight number seven is going to be a brawler that i kind of struggled to place on this list to be quite honest with you and i'm going to put Maisie here for now her hyper charge is still one of the best in the game but i just noticed at that professional level that she's not being used nearly as much as she used to be and it's not because she's banned a ton i just think with all the balance changes that she's received that she's no longer this top one or two kind of brawler anymore i still feel like she's pretty good but i just feel like there are a lot of other brawlers that have been on the rise that have gotten boost and she's just kind of kept down and down and down so i'm going to settle here at number seven still think she's really solid still think she has a hyper charge that's worth unlocking but i struggle to place her any higher than this number six is going to be nani who is in an excellent spot in the game right now especially with ranked coming out so i do think there's a lot of value for nani encountering single shot brawlers that are really popular right now on these long range maps is going to be valuable and just a good general brawler to be honest with you right now especially considering that she doesn't have a hyper charge so i feel like number six is a good spot for her. for number five i'm throwing pam here and i feel like i'm going to reach a pretty good compromise at number five with pam across all the kinds of brawl stars players including the fun factor i wouldn't say she's the highest right she doesn't make the flashiest plays i know there are a lot of players out there that don't necessarily wake up in the morning looking to play pam but if you're looking for somebody to invest your credits in that is a really good brawler that you're going to be able to use and win with across many maps and modes pam is the character for you pam is so versatile she does really well in the tank she's going to counter single shot brawlers and big friends she's going to bring 9,000 hp to the table and a siphon gadget that can cut off the enemies that have high hp and quick fire she's going to be really good because she reloads really fast i think pam overall is in a great spot is very competitive going to counter a lot of the meta and including that fun factor maybe not be the most fun but hey winning's fun too so i think pam is a good fit for all brawlers right here at number five number four is going to be piper in the final sharpshooter of this list i feel like piper is a little bit easier to approach for people than somebody like a nani even though nani does usually counter a piper if they're kind of a similar skill but piper is just very versatile as a sharpshooter heavy hitting fast reload has a curve to kind of correct your misses if you're struggling with that with the gadget i think there's just a lot of uses for piper right now a longer range meta and the time detonation has brought her value even higher so i think piper is an excellent brawler overall a very iconic one for the game and somebody that if you get your hands on you're gonna have a lot of fun with at number three i'm going with colette who i think is just so versatile right now in this meta if you just want to talk about classic game modes no modifiers just playing brawl stars already in a really solid spot in game modes like heist where she's going to be able to dish a ton of damage out. Additionally, in terms of
terms of bang for your credits or bang for your bucks, however you want to look at it, Colette has a hypercharge that I think is still top 10 amongst all the hypercharges and the value that it brings to making Colette even better. Despite all these balance changes, Colette's in a really good spot. She's the biggest tank counter out there as well. The higher HP enemies have, the better Colette does. And because of that, she is insane on the big friend modifier for rank. So I think in competitive, she actually just got a stock bump in that sense in terms of the general meta because big friend is really free for Colette. So make sure you're either banning her or picking her for yourself if possible for you. In the general ladder, she's going to be really good. I think her hypercharge is going to give you a lot of value. There's not a lot of wrong that Colette can do. And on top of that, she makes some huge flashy plays. She's a unique character. So I think in terms of brawlers to unlock in the epic tier, Colette's as good as it gets. At number three, I am going with Pearl. And this is one of those that is going to be a little controversial if you're a fun factor kind of player. This might not be the one for you. It is a very passive aggressive brawler in that she benefits from not shooting because it charges up how much damage her shot can do. But that damage is so lethal and she's such a winning brawler to the point where I feel like Pearl has to be mentioned this highly. Now that ranks come out as well in quick fire, she is so good. The damage she brings is still really valuable. And despite getting a few nerfs in the mix, such as her health points, it didn't really bring her down too much for me. The hypercharge has never made Pearl special. So that's not really something that I was necessarily looking out for or concerned about. The biggest thing I did notice though, they actually buffed the damage that Pearl's hypercharge does, which is huge. Damage is a big reason why Pearl is good. So they didn't touch that in her base stats. They elevated it in her hypercharge and she is still absolutely lethal. Again, if fun is what you're looking for, maybe look elsewhere. But if winning is how you have fun, Pearl is a good way to go. At number one, I am going to put the twins and I've kind of had a 180 on my thoughts on Larry and Lori after more time with the current balance change set. I think Larry and Lori deserve to be here. I think they're still in contention for top five, top 10 overall in the game. And I think it makes sense to me that they would be the best epic tier brawler because of how many different use cases they have. Good range. They don't have hypercharge. So that's something worth noting, but I think they make up for it just as base brawlers. And I think the biggest thing for me is the range, the damage. Lori is like a Bruce kind of asset where he can run at enemy brawlers, do damage, but he's really good. He's really intelligent. I don't know. Larry and Lori are still in a spot where they're really good. They're not necessarily as busted or broken as they used to be, but I feel like they're just going to be able to add value to any level of player. If you're new to the game, they're going to be really good. Newer players are going to struggle dodging that shot that Larry and Lori have. The upper echelon of players too, even pros. Larry and Lori are getting plenty of playing time on a lot of different maps. So if you're a ranked player, if you're a ladder player, if you're new, if you're seasoned, Larry and Lori are going to be great overall. Even with all these nerfs, I still think they're running rampant. I think Larry and Lori are number one on this list.